Well, welcome back to the Talking Archive. My name is Josh Jacobs, and it's an honor to talk with the founder of the website, FlickrHappy.com. The uh, word is spelled F-L-I-C-K-R, no E, FlickrHappy.com. And his name is Sammy Nasrawi. Thanks for uh, being with us today, Sammy. Hey, it's great to be here, Josh. Thank you for having me on. Well, tell us about your background and how you started Flickr Happy. Yeah, I have a crazy background. Uh, you know, I, I went to film school. I went to USC. Uh, I did that in the early 90s. I had a great experience. And I'm going to you know, cut to the chase because it's a long, long story. But I, I envisioned one day I would be making socu- docu- science documentaries, uh, you know, kind of in the same vein of doing things for the PBS channel or, or Discover um, at the time when it was when it was around. I don't even know if Discover is still around. So um, I did a lot of science post baccalaureate work. I ended up working for a neurologist, and that led me into pharmacy school. And I became a pharmacist. And to make a long story short, I ended up into the world of pharmacy. I worked for a drug company in rare diseases, but. Um, and that the sole purpose of that was to say, you know, look, I have this regular job I could do by day while I could pursue kind of these things I wanted to do in film mm-hmm. uh, on the side and, and never wonder, like, okay, you know, how am I going to make ends meet and, and, and how can I make all this happen? So, you know, not planned this way, but, you know, my career in pharmacy just kind of overshadowed everything. But I decided I still, you know, I still wanted to do film. I still love film. And... Uh, throughout the years, I've had touches into doing film screenings um, randomly here and there, kind of sparsely scattered throughout my entire background um, uh, while I was going to pharmacy school. So in 1995, I did a 35 millimeter screening in the city of Orange. I'm based out in Southern California. Um, at that time, I was living in Orange, California, and I did a screening of the original Halloween from 1978. And this was like right at the cusp of when the internet was first starting. So I didn't have access to, con- there was no IMDB. I didn't have any contact to anybody. And I managed to get PJ Souls, um, who was one of the co-stars of Halloween, to come do a Q&A at, at this screening. And I was very green. I didn't know what I was doing. Uh, she was wonderful. She did a great Q&A with the crowd. All she wanted was tickets to Disneyland for her and her family, which I thought was very fair. Yeah. And, you know, that was my first bat at, at doing something like this. Um, and then later on, while I was at film school, um, I met a silent film historian, a professor friend, a guy named David Shepard, who introduced me to silent films. People like not only Chaplin, but Buster Keaton and Harold Lloyd. I grew to love those. And so I, I've also done a few silent films where I'll get the actual film. I'll have an organist come play live to the, um, uh, you know, to, to, the, to the screening. And that always is a big crowd, crowd pleaser. So I've done a few of those. Um, but the problem was, was that in Orange County, we didn't have a dedicated independent theater to showing these kinds of films. And L.A., L.A. is wonderful. You can go to mm-hmm. the Arrow, the Egyptian, the New Beverly. Uh, and Orange County didn't really have any. I used to go to a place called the Curtis Theater in Brea, which, you know, it was like an actual stage theater that would do plays and all. But I would rent that out and put up a projector mm-hmm. and do some films there. And then finally came the Frida Cinema. And I think everything changed with the Frida and, you know, that kind of is how back in 2019, uh, Flickr Happy, I just kind of started that and that took off. And that's what led me to what I do today is I try to really screen the films that I want to screen, the films that I love, the films that made me happy growing up, the films that don't get a lot of attention. And um, that's that that's kind of where I got to now. Well, tell us about the history of the Frida Cinema, because that was my first time being in that. It was kind of like a old town Santa Ana type vibe, that area that when we had the Midnight Madness screening about a month and a half ago, it was really cool. I'd never actually been to that part of Santa Ana before. And uh, tell us about the Frida Cinema, its history as far as the when it was built and how it came about. Sure. So I don't work for the Frida Cinema, but they are... Um, so I don't know too much about the history, but I will say you are correct. It's in Santa Ana. It's on 4th Street. It's a beautiful little stretch of area that's 
you know, just has a lot of different shops and some restaurants and places to eat. And, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a great little, uh, you know, I think it's located very at, at, a, at a great place, kind of central. So it's, you know, it, it, if you're from northern Orange County or southern Orange County, it's right there smack dab, not too far from Disneyland. Uh, and I think it was founded, if I'm not mistaken, somewhere around maybe 2014, 2013, 2015, right around there. So it's about 10 years old, I think, is a safe, is, is a safe bet. It's, it's mm-hmm. Orange County's only 501c3 independent, uh, nonprofit, uh, you know, uh, art house cinema. And they really show lots of films each month. Um, if you kind of go on the website, you'll see what it says. It, it caters to a wide variety of genres, the focus on foreign, avant-garde. Cult and horror seems to be their bread and butter. Uh, LGBT revival documentary. It's not really a first-run cinema unless it's kind of um, um, in, in, unless it's kind of maybe um, an under-the-radar type of film or an mm-hmm. independent. Then then they'll do those. And you know, so they have a repertoire that they show, but they also cater to independent organizations or entities like myself where we can come along and they'll work with people like me where I can rent out the theater and they'll work with me to get the films I want to show. And, um, and they do a lovely job. I mean, that's just basically what they do is they advocate uh, the screening of a myriad, you know, variety of, of films. And I think they also have, you know, film festivals, student film festivals there, um, and also non-film things, too. I think they'll have, like, some student stand-up comedy. And so it's a venue that kind of hosts a lot of different things. But the Frida is just, they've been a blessing, I think, for Orange County. And so as much as I love what L.A. does, and I do go to Los Angeles, and I love going to places like the Egyptian and the Arrow, mm-hmm. it's wonderful to have something down over here as well. Um, so, yeah, it's been a game-changer for me. Yeah, definitely. And uh, also, I noticed that in 2003, you held a screen of a 1925 silent film, The Freshman, uh, with live accompaniment from then 91-year-old organist Robert Mitchell. Uh, Doing some digging on him earlier this week, I noticed that he was the organist at Dodger Stadium from 1962 to 66. Um, A lot of people remember Helen Dell and then Nancy B. Hefley, but um, how many people remember Bob Mitchell as the uh, organist? How did you come upon uh, working with Bob Mitchell? (laughs) Yeah, so I didn't even know that about the Dodger Stadium. So Bob Mitchell um, was, you know, he used to play silent films back in the 1920s. He was kind of one of the original ones. He must have been very, very young back then. And I think he passed away Oh, maybe sometime in the last 15 years, yeah. 20 years, you know, mm-hmm. but um, I, so back in the, you know, in LA and on Fairfax, there used to be a theater called the Silent Movie Theater, not too far from Cantor's Deli. I don't know what it is today, but, um, and then there was a tragedy that occurred there, I think in the 1990s. Um, where someone had kind of lost their life, you know, one of the theater owners. But before that, it used to just play a variety of different silent films, which is, imagine a venue dedicated to showing silent films, uh, you know, the way they were meant to be seen on the big Mm -hmm. screen with live accompaniment. And David Mitchell was, you know, one of, I mean, sorry, uh, Bob Mitchell was um, one of the organists there. But another organist there was a gentleman named Dean Mora, who you know, was was much younger and, you know, performed a lot of films. And I started using him a lot for the silent films that I would screen. Uh, and, you know, he also would have a 1920s, play, uh, in the 1920s band, they would play at Cicada Club, which is a place also in Los Angeles. And it's still going strong, you know, every year they'll just, it's kind of um uh, what I want to say, it's it's like a, like a period uh, specific type of venue where they'll play anywhere from 1920s to 1940s, and people go out there decked in appropriate attire. But so I met this gentleman named Dean Mora, and he would come to perform, uh, you know, and, and accompany the screen, the silent film screenings that I would do. On one occasion, Dean wasn't available, and he recommended that I get Bob you know, Bob Mitchell. And so that's how I came across Bob was through the recommendation of Dean and Bob Mitchell was great. He came with a nurse. Um, and I don't know how he got to the theater all the way down in Brea, but he did. And I'm, Mm. I mean, as wonderful, I think, what did I show? I either showed a Harold Lloyd or a Buster Keaton, but, um, I'm telling you as wonderful as the film was, the audience was blown away by 
Bob by Bob Mitchell. And despite his age, he must have been in his 90s at the time, um, late 80s, early 90s. He was amazing on that organ. It was like, it was like, just like he stepped back in the 1920s performing for that crowd. Um, amazing experience. In fact, uh, Mitchell had so much accomplishments in his life that in 1949, when he was in his mid to late 30s, the TV series This Is Your Life honored him with that book. It was created by Ralph Edwards, uh, for those listening, mm-hmm. um, and it was on for many years on television. Ironically, before I interviewed you, I interviewed Mark Maxwell Smith, who uh, was a writer for Ralph Edwards' production, Truth or Consequences, which was also Bob Barker's first uh, game show. So, uh, But This Is Your Life was a show that surprised lots of people over the years. And Ralph Edwards hosted a series of uh, specials throughout the years until well into the early, uh, late 90s, early 2000s. So that was a great thing for uh, for Bob Mitchell to be one of the people honored with that uh, with that uh, book right there. Yeah, no, that's, uh, you know, that, that's, that's quite amazing. I mean, you're, you're telling me a lot about Bob Mitchell that I didn't even know. I mean, what I remembered about Bob Mitchell was, you know, a lot of his extensive legacy in film. One of the things was his formation of the Mitchell Boys Choir, which did over a hundred films. Uh, some of them with Bing Crosby, things like going my way, um, and I think The Bishop's Wife with Cary Grant. So we had a huge screen presence that I think a lot of people don't even appreciate today. And at the time that I met him, you know, I, I didn't. So when you carry that over into just having him there in person with, you know, with the entire audience just being, being wowed by his presence, this was a man I just feel like um, it's – I don't know how much Hollywood remembered him and how much how much people remembered him, but it was just an honor to have him because obviously he has done a lot both on television and and in film. So I'm very happy and very proud to say that I got a chance to have him come perform for and he was just gracious. He he was wonderful. This is the Talking Archive. My name is Josh Jacobs. We're talking with Sammy Naswari from FlickerHappy.com. That's spelled F-L-I-C-K-R, the word happy.com. By the way, if you want to check us out on Instagram, it's JoshDJ57. Also, subscribe to our YouTube channel right now. And next time, Sammy talks about the movies Midnight Madness as well as Electric Dreams coming to the Frida.